Welcome back to DXP. Today it is Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, we are aware and we are addressing the issue today, asking is there a link between exercise in whatever form and your mental health. Well, to that end, we put together a who's who of experts. Next guest is uh, somebody who uh, is renowned for her expertise in integrating mindfulness and yoga practices within modern psychology to promote holistic well-being. Uh, Brian Jacques from the Free Spirit Collective is alongside us. Brian, great to see you as always. Thanks for having me. Um, listen, I think we've uh, we've touched on already. There are so many ways to address exercise, movement and mental health as well. Talk to me about the, three, the Free Spirit Collective mantra here and, and your met, the methods you advocate for dealing with what is a very wide ranging subject of mental health. Yeah, well there's no one way, right? So at Free Spirit Collective, which we call FSC, yeah, we have everything from psychiatry to coaching, personal development. So all the way from the very clinical, mm -hmm. where we alleviate symptomology, we treat emergent things, all the way to where people want to sort of what we call broaden and build. But with everything we do, we try to take a whole person approach. So that's mental, emotional, spiritual, social, and community based. We're a pro-social organization. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we're just looking at those facets all the time and each individual clinician will have a different background, a different way of approaching that and then of course it's highly personalised. Mm. There's no really one size fits all. No one size fits yeah. all but an, an, an a collaborative approach as you say, you Definitely. can take from different disciplines. Definitely, like we do what's called multidisciplinary teams. So. Our psychiatrist will work with a coach, work with a clinical psych, will work with a, a group leader, and they will all work together yeah. on a person's journey. Um, and that seems to be really effective. Yeah. Briar, you mentioned how you have a different approach. Now, I know for the Free Spirit Collective, you are pushing movement as a form of therapy. So yoga, dance, why do you think these approaches are more, would you say, impactful than uh, the traditional cognitive way of uh, therapy? The way I think of it is the body doesn't lie, mm. right? So we can carry stories and programs that we've picked up that can be really resistant to change. You know, usually by the time I'm working with a client, they've done everything their intellect can often do. Now that doesn't mean we don't work on what I think of as a library of the mind. You know, you need a great library, so some volumes are definitely got to go. Um, but the body, when you put somebody into shapes, so we say yoga, yoga's just making shapes. So you put them into these shapes, and this is an ancient system. This is 5,000 year old system, right? So it's highly intelligent. And whether their mind likes it or not, that person starts to have a holistic experience of themselves, which might challenge some of these beliefs and concepts. So I think of it as breaking patterns, giving somebody a lot of room to move, and challenging them in real time, um, non-verbally. Mm. So it, yeah, it's hard to even put it into language because you are dealing with the non-verbal experience because it's really experience that heals people, you know, Adel, rather than ideas. does this ring true with your experiences? Oh, 100%. I mean, I try to get the men into movement as much as possible, you know, and we've had some coaches come specifically to get them to just even just breathe deeply into the body and, and just even just beating the chest, it might sound kind of weird, but just moving and just getting the, the energy flowing through the body differently actually gets them, we've had men cry in meditations, mm. and they're like, why am I crying? Mm. But it's because their body is doing things that they haven't done before. Yeah. And like you said, the body doesn't lie. It's that untapped potential within the body. Definitely. <laughs> you, uh, you speak of, about holding steady as well in your practices. Can you just uh, emphasize a little bit on that and what that means, how it helps people? Yeah, like, so if we think about, so think about yoga practice, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to, or, or any, any physical sporting activity, you're going to encounter things that don't feel good, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if you can learn your capacity for, for holding steady, for holding your center, for holding yourself, for holding a bigger picture in mind, when you're faced with discomfort, that can apply to multiple uh, situations then. So we practice that in physical activity you get to practice that in real time again non-verbally. It's not like a, a dictate in the mind I need to be tougher or I need to be more centered or more zen. It's you get to find out how much more capacity you have for that than your mind will tell you you do. And so that builds upon itself um, quite magically. Again these are old systems they're super wise. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. 
and it's, I suppose it's, it's, it's that age of, again, you, you know, you, when you put it so perfectly and succinctly, it's like, why have we had such a problem? Why have we created such a problem for ourselves in modern life at the moment? Because it is that old, the old adage, isn't it, of exercise in the body is exercise in the mind, yeah. and it is leading on to clearer mental thinking. Is that, is that the approach? Definitely. I mean, this is the world the mind built, right? So right. We, we are the cooperative species, right? That means we can imagine things and we can build things from our imagination. This is amazing. The problem is the over-dominance. So if we're living in that mind, we're not living as we're holistically designed to live. Like We're designed to move, we're designed to connect, and we're designed to be whole individuals. So yes, if you want a better mind, going to what I call the bottom-up approaches, where you're having an experience physically, and that's reverberating through you emotionally and mentally, is often um, a quicker road to just taking the top down, can I understand myself, what's my story? That both are important, but often that's that first one's underutilized yeah yeah but are you concerned about the fact that you know, more and more of our decision making maybe i can get your thoughts on this as well is being taken away from us at the moment you look at younger generations the concern around smartphones decisions are being made by ai and siri and anyone else who or, or google maps tells you where to go on a daily basis etc the decision making process is taking our sort of independence away from us is that is that does that therefore impact on our eventual mental I'm getting very deep here sorry I know it's a I know it's just the evening etc but is it impacting on our mental health yeah so when we think about what do we want driving our life yeah. you don't want your mind and when I say mind I, I mean ego I mean the construct that comes out of language okay you don't want that driving your life because that's a conditioned program. You want consciousness driving your life. Okay, that was there before you got language. It's like getting in the car, taking Google Maps, putting it in the driver's seat, hopping in the passenger seat and going, where are we going? Yeah. You know, it's a tool. So when you work with the body, you learn to use the mind as a tool better, in my experience. But yeah, you want that consciousness choosing where you're going. Yeah. This is um, yeah. living with intention. Yeah. You know, I think I, one of the things I encourage my, my clients to do and my, and my men is to, for example, have a morning routine. Mm. It's something as simple as going for a walk or just getting some sunlight, not using your phone first thing. I encourage men to just go buy an alarm clock, for example, because they use it as an excuse of, oh, but my phone is my alarm. Okay, buy an alarm clock, put that to one side and start your day with intention. And it might just allow yourself to feel a bit better about your day. Yeah. And rather than thinking the day's happening to you, you're actually in control of what's happening in your day. Yeah. Definitely. Food for thought. Definitely being able to kind of take that control back through a physical manner is uh, a great way to start the day and to kind of help like your mental attitude just like on a daily approach. So Briar, thank you so much for joining us. But it's now an opportunity for us to get to know Adel a little bit better because I believe, Louis, it's time for DXB in 60. Oh yes, a little surprise for you, Adel. <laughs> We're <laughs> gonna put you under the spotlight right now. We're okay. gonna try to find out as much as we can about you in 60 seconds. So okay. rapid fire questions okay. in 60 seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, 60 seconds starts in three, two, one. If you weren't in the mental health space, what would you be doing? Uh, I think I'd like to be a scientist. Really? Yeah. Your motto in life and in work? Uh, live with intention. Nice. A superpower that you wish you had? Teleportation. <laughs> Get through Shakes Road really quickly. Oh, <laughs> we all need that one. Your first job? Uh, I was in procurement, so I worked for the government in the, in the UK. Oh, wow. Top podcast recommendation? Uh, I think we guys, <laughs> you guys might know it, but uh, it's Jibber with Jabber. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Most used app on your phone? Uh, Waze. Is there a TV show that you're currently watching? Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is my favorite TV show. On oh, Netflix. funny. Yeah. Your go-to place in Dubai? Uh, Kana Cafe. And if you could hang out with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? Stephen Bartlett. Why is that? I just find him incredibly inspiring. I've seen him speak a few times now and I, I, I could listen to him all day. All right. Well, before your time ends, why Dubai? Um, I feel this is a place where I could really be someone that, does, that is doing something that has that needs impact. The impact that I'm, I want to put out to the world, I feel like this is the place to be. And it's proven that to be that way so far. The fact that I'm sitting here with you guys is testament to that. And uh, yeah, very grateful. 
Really lovely. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. you can come back. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, <laughs> praising the team here. That's for, that's a, that, you're more than welcome to come back onto <laughs> please, the sofa. Please, please. Adult, listen, bless you. Thanks so much indeed for uh, agreeing to guest co-host. Uh, yes. You've been giving us some great insight and thanks for sharing your experiences as well. Really appreciate that. Pleasure. as well. Thank you so much indeed for your time as well. Thanks, I know yeah. time is precious uh, in this part of the world. So thanks so much indeed for being with us. Here. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, we ain't going anywhere though. Okay, stay with us in the moment if you can. We've got an amazing performance coming away in just a few moments time. Alina uh, is preparing as we speak. So we'll play out with music next.